Hi, I'm Jodie Thring. I live in Gindabyne. I've been snowboarding since 1996 and in 2005 I broke my neck snowboarding. I was paralysed from the shoulders down and was told that there'd be little chance that I'd ever walk again. I spent five months in hospital and uh, learnt how to walk again and then I got back on my snowboard six months later and started riding again. Uh, I've been competing overseas since 2007. We're here at the New Zealand Adaptive Snow Sports Festival, um, which will compete in the national championships and also uh, the WSF World Championships. I guess we're really um, aiming in Australia just to raise some awareness and get the ball rolling so that we can um, have athletes training and competing um, to eventually put a team together and push for the sport to become a Paralympic sport, which would be awesome. Sitting here with Tyler Mershaw and Ian Lockie and the coach Candice from the Canadian Adaptive Snowboard team. Uh, I've been coaching the Canadian Adaptive Snowboard team for almost a year now, coming up to a year, and I've been working with Ian and Tyler uh, as much as possible, um, and their progression has been pretty phenomenal. I'm Tyler Mosher, I'm on the National Adaptive Snowboard Team for Canada and the Canadian Paranautic Cross Country Team, 2009-2010. Um, uh, in 2000, December 30th, I had a spinal cord injury uh, that was believed to be complete, it turned out to be incomplete. I was lucky enough to be able to learn to walk again. I'm currently about 40% paralyzed below the waist. And uh, through training, luck, and uh, perseverance, um, I lead a pretty regular life and uh, look at the things that I'm able to do versus the few things that I'm not able to do. And uh, that's my story, I'm sticking to it. I'm Ian Lockie, I'm 36 years old and in 1998 I had a snowboarding accident and broke my back, suffered some spinal cord damage. And I'm now a standing paraplegic, I'm suffering about 50% paralysis from the waist down um, due to being rather stubborn and having quite good balance reflexes. I was able to get out of my chair and walk again. And Gravity is my friend, so downhill sports I really still enjoy and, and I'm able to do it. I think it quite, quite well. Have lots of fun doing it, that's the main thing. And I'm here with, I'm here on the Canadian Adaptive Snowboard Team and they support us and they give us the necessary coaching and help that we need to perform at a high level. And demonstrate for people that it's not about what your injuries are, it's just about going out there and doing the best that you can and having a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Jody. you know me. Um, this is Carl and Adam, who's Carl's coach. Yeah, as Jodie said, my name's Carl. Um, I'm a writer from New Zealand. I'm a blow knee amputee. Uh, I've been riding for about 13, 14 years, uh, the whole time with a prosthetic leg. I've had some great coaching and support from Snow Sports New Zealand. How important is it with the coaching and, and the support that you've got from New Zealand Snow Sports? Um, it's played a huge part in my recent success. Um, definitely the one on one coaching has, has helped me progress as a rider. Yeah, my technique. Yeah, skill levels have increased hugely. Um, you did really well in the comps this week too. Yeah, I've got a couple of silver medals this week, which I'm really happy with. Um, it's really good, like getting a full classification system up and running as well, so to make it more fair for all the riders. Yeah, so yeah, it's great. Oh, classification was yeah. pretty important. Representing New Zealand, Come yeah. So he's really progressed. Yeah, he's progressing yeah. incredibly. A lot faster now, a lot better rider than six months ago. Cool. So it's always good to see someone progressing like that and 
I, I don't know that like the next few years I see it progressing tenfold without a doubt. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Mm. Thanks, guys. It was a little bit challenging, but it was not so much that it wasn't fun. I think it was good that we actually had a chance to kind of train in it as well. Adaptive snowboarding is not as simple to classify as bucket seat snow skiing. I mean, that's pretty much about you put a person in a bucket and you find out how much up and body strength they have. That's just about it. Whereas on a snowboard, every single person is different. Every person has a different amount of strength. Every person has, in your guys' case, a different paralysis. Yeah. All the sports, they do the strength tests, and they do the measurements of uh, residual limbs and stuff like that. Um, none of them are sport specific, and, and that's a major problem. So that's something that we're identifying right away, which I think is a great start. The purpose of this workshop is to gather experts in the technical side of snowboarding and classification of athletes in winter sports to discuss the importance of top 10 snowboard skills involved in adaptive snowboard cross and how they are impacted on the major <coughs> joint movements in the upper and lower extremities. Um, this will represent the base for adaptive B SBX classification development. We're looking at all the skills, breaking down each skill that's involved in, in the sport. So. What they're doing is they're doing what Paralympic is telling them they what have to do. This is okay. the process. This is what you do to make a classification system that is able to be approved by a Paralympic. Working with the mountain, if you you know if it's something that you're passionate about, working with the mountains, at creating a learn to ride program, and then from there creating something that's grassroots, learn you know, learn to train, um, and then from there, you know, for yourself trying to create a high performance program. Even if you're just one person, you know, I'm sure Australia snowboarding able body started with one person as well. Yeah. yeah. So once we get it into Paralympics, right. then people will have money. We're in the same boat everywhere, right? Everywhere. Then yeah. nations will have money to support grassroots programs and promote it. Well, let's let's shoot let's let's shoot to, to try and get two back-to-back -back World Cups, one in Canada, one in the states, uh, you know, maybe post Paralympics. A, post Paralympics with the USASA Nationals to follow. So I this as develop an international network. Yeah. As athletes, we have to accept that it's a flawed system comparing disabilities, different disabilities. So we're all standing and we're all going to be competing in the blinds. We'll compete against the blinds, and the, and the seated will compete against the seated. Um, you know when that develops. So we just have to accept that we're not comparing apples to apples, but we are all fruits, and we're being thrown into a bowl, and it's a really nice bowl of fruit. <laughs> 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 I appreciates being called fruit. <laughs>